Good morning, Church. Our scripture today is coming from the book of Colossians, chapter 3, verse 9 to 10. And it reads as follows Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have put off the old self with its practices, and you have put on the new self which is being renewed in knowledge after the image after the image of its creator. Amen. Good morning, good talk. Uh, the one preaching 
talking about the sins of the town for the next couple of weeks. Um, and I want to also quote uh, something that was taught to us in one of our young adult seminars um, with regards to sin. And I want that to always be in our minds as we think about the sins of the town, right? Um, sin is sin. And in this regard, whatever it is we're going to be talking about as we talk about sins of the time, sin is sin, number one, even if you benefit from it. Uh, sin is sin, even if many are doing it. Uh, sin is sin, even if others are doing worse than what you're doing. Sin is sin, even if it doesn't bother your conscience. Sin is sin, even if you don't get caught. And sin is sin even if you don't believe it to be wrong. Just to say it again. Sin is sin even if you benefit from it. Sin is sin even if many are doing it. Sin is sin even if others are doing worse than what you are doing. Or should I say worse? Um, sin is sin even if it doesn't bother your conscience. Sin is sin even if you don't get caught. And sin is sin even if you don't believe it to be wrong. And, and so with that said, then this morning we want to talk about lying. We want to talk about lying. I'll give you a few seconds uh, to think about when was the last time you, you told a lie? I always, whenever I preach about lying, this is always how I start the lesson. When was the last time you told a lie? I, I, and I wonder is, if, if, if we did think about it. I wonder how many of us um, thought about what we deem on our own scale to be a big lie um, um, and that has serious consequences, right? And so when I was asking you about when was the last time you told a lie, that's where your mind went, right? Everything else, uh, there's a scale we have created where um, it's a big lie and it has serious consequences. But I don't think that's the kind of thinking that we ought to have when it comes uh, to lying. Uh, I honestly believe that lying is one of the sins that has become uh, sanitized and watered down in our uh, world and in our time today, where I think to an extent we even agree uh, it might not be uh, expressly so, uh, but I believe that in a way through how we conduct ourselves and, and what we do not speak out against, I think we, we have reached some form of agreement that there are certain e, or rather certain instances and certain uh, circumstances in which it is okay to lie or it is understandable to lie. Even if you might say, okay, this is wrong, but, but no, I understand, Shane. Right? I, 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 I understand. And, and what we do is sometimes we even go to scripture to, to show that look in this situation it was okay for this person to lie this person told a lie and nothing happened to him and maybe while we are still here uh, before we continue speaking about how we want to view scripture we need to understand Masalana, that in scripture there are things that are descriptive and there are things that are prescriptive right and not all things are prescriptive in scripture what I mean by that is that there are some things that purely and merely describe a chain of events. They describe what happened. But it does not necessarily mean that those things prescribe what we ought to do. So even those scriptures that we might, passages that we might look at and say, but you see here, Abraham told a lie. He said Sarah eh, was, was his sister when in fact uh, Sarah uh, was his wife. And then we say, okay, you see, Lying is okay. I, I don't think that's how we ought to look at um, such uh, passages. But rather, we ought to have a, a view of lying that reflects that we have submitted and surrendered ourselves and our entire being to the Lord Jesus and His Lordship, and that we are allowing Him. Uh, our allow almost sounds as if we are giving Him permission, but we have surrendered. And we have, we, we have placed ourselves in His hands that through the Holy Spirit He is sanctifying us and, and bringing about in our lives the work of salvation. And so with that in mind then, we are going to talk a little bit about, about life.
by nothing new, but something just to remind us and to get us thinking and to stimulate our thinking uh, once more. To cast the net wide about what we are talking about when we uh, speak about lying, we are talking about deceit. We are talking about falsehood. We are talking about false witness, misrepresentation, misinformation, uh, and, and, and fraud, right? That's what we are talking uh, about. And I honestly believe, because scripture says so, that, that, that lying is more serious than we make it out to be. Lying is more serious than, 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 than we, 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 we perhaps even believe, right? Uh, because if you look at firstly what scripture says about lying, in Proverbs um, chapter 6, uh, this is probably before uh, I, I came, but I, I am sure that uh, Baxter uh, would have done a, a thorough job in, in, in addressing this. But in Proverbs chapter 6, um, there, are, there is the list of the so-called six things, yes, even seven things that the Lord hates. Uh, it should be around there in verse 16. Uh, and, and there the author tells us that lying is one of those things, right? God hates lying, uh, lying. And then when you go to John uh, chapter 8, again, I'm going, I'm going to have to, to mention Bechta because this is probably one of his favorites. Uh, uh, Jesus there speaks about how Satan has been a liar from, from, from the beginning and is the father of lies. And he says when we lie, we are children of Satan. And so not only does God hate lie, lying or lies, but lying makes us children of Satan. Uh, when, when we were young, growing up, we used to have this thing where we would say someone, you are a child of Satan. I, I never knew that that was a thing, right? Until I grew up and realized in scripture that scripture actually does say that someone is a child of Satan. And when we lie, it makes us the children of Satan. Listen to what Revelation 21 says. Revelation 21 speaks about how liars will have their place in the lake of fire. And Matthew 15, 18 to 20 tells us that lying defiles us. There is this um, issue where Jesus is asked about why his uh, disciples do not wash their hands before they eat. And, and, and Jesus says it is not what a man takes in that defiles them, right? But rather it is what comes from the heart. And in verse 19, among the things that Jesus mentioned as an example to say, these are things that proceed from the heart through the mouth, and these are the things that define a person. Uh, Jesus there includes lying. And so I don't know about you, Bazawana, but this is something that we really need to give careful attention to. This is something that is perhaps serious uh, more than uh, we make it out to be. But why then? What, why is it that it is like this? Or perhaps, what are the effects of lies in, 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 in our lives? Firstly, the thing about lying is that it is opposed to the nature and character of God. When you read in the book of John chapter 1, by the way, there's going to be a lot of scriptures today, so for those who might uh, be writing, uh, heads up. Uh, John chapter 1 verse 14 and John 14 verse 6. John 1 14 tells us about how uh, the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory, the glory is of the only one begotten of God, full of grace and full of truth. And then in John 14 verse 6, this word that John tells us about, who is Jesus, he says to us, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And so uh, God incarnate, um, the, the, the human uh, personification of God, the one who fully represents the character of God, who embodies who God truly is, as Colossians uh, chapter 2 verse 9 and, and 1 and 19 tell us about how the fullness of God dwells in him in body before. When we look at Jesus, we truly see the character of God. And the Bible tells us that he is not only full of truth, but he even says he is the truth. That's 
how much of a, a very close relationship, if so to put it, there is between Jesus and the truth that the Bible would even say, he himself entered you would even say he is the truth. And also, in Numbers 23 verse 19, Numbers 23 verse 19, and Titus 1 verse 2, it speaks about how God cannot lie. It says, um, 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 God is not a man, right, that he should lie. And also, um, in, in Titus 1 2, uh, Paul says, uh, he, he says, God with whom it is impossible to lie. And so we see again here, Mr. Rodney, that lies and lying are incompatible with what is the nature and character of God. They are contrary to what is the nature and character of God. In John 14, uh, 16 and 17, Jesus promising the Holy Spirit, he says, I will send you the helper. And in verse 17, he calls him the spirit of truth. Now, I don't know if you notice what we have done here. We have spoken about Jesus. We have spoken about the Spirit. And we have spoken about God. And most, as, as much as the Father and the Son are God, most of the time in Scripture, when it, um, there's a reference to God, at least in, in, in the context, it speaks of the Father. And so we see that God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, uh, they are not characterized by lies. It is against their nature. It is against uh, who they truly are. And so if you and I are called to be imitators of God, um, Ephesians 5 verse 1 says, if you and I are called to reflect the glory of God, if you and I are called to follow in the ways of Jesus, if you and I are called to live a life that, that shows that the Holy Spirit is working in our lives, then lying and falsehood is something that should be put away from us. We should not lie because lying is opposed to the nature and character of God. Another thing that we see in scripture um, is, 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 is uh, perhaps moving from the vertical and now going to the horizontal. Um, lying destroys whatever relationship there is in which they are taught. Lying destroys whatever relationship there is in which they are told. Um, Proverbs 26 verse 28. I am sorry my brother my friend for uh, walking in your territory. But Proverbs 26 and 28 says, A lying tongue hates those who are crushed by it. And a flattering mouth works ruin. Think about that for a moment. A lying tongue hates those who are crushed by it. And so in whatever relationship that we find ourselves in, when we are not honest, when we are not truthful, when we tell lies, Brother Lord, it is not a reflection of lying, but rather of loving, of being loving, but it is a reflection of being, it is a reflection of being um, 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 filled with hatred. And again, this is not one of those things where we, we are like, okay, but that's not true of me. But rather our actions reflect and they manifest what is true of us. And so whether we think it or not, whether we believe it or not, whether we know it or not, whether we say it or not, when we lie, scripture tells us that those who are on the other end of or the receiving end of our lives are actually um, not loved by us, but rather we hate them. And, and that's what lying does, Brother Ryan. It, 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 it breaks trust. It creates an, an environment of, of, of uneasiness. It creates an environment of second guessing at each other. It creates an environment where there are insecurities. It creates an environment where we doubt whether uh, people have uh, our best interest at heart. It leads to us losing our integrity. And again, it's no wonder that it does this because um, the writer of Proverbs tells us that lying um, is a, or rather comes from a place of hate. And so we see here that um, lying is not something that should be uh, in, in our lives. Simply because it's sin, right? But I guess we need to uh, 
sometimes rationalize and, and speak about why sin is, is not okay. So sin is, is the sin of lying, number one, is opposed to the nature and the character of God. And secondly, um, it destroys whatever relationships we have in which uh, they are told. Another thing though that it does, it, it really places a burden on you. If, if whatever you are lying about means so much to you, that, that you would rather lie than tell the truth, then most often than not, it means you, 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 you have to keep up that lie. And so you, 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 you have to take out an ongoing subscription where you, you, you have subscribed. This is not rain where it's month to month and you can cancel at any time. But you, 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 have, you have taken out a, 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 a two-year contract. And, and so you, you always have, have to, to be on your guard to, to say, but am I keeping up appearances? Am I, am I, am I, am I, am I what, I, what I'm saying, what, I, what I am doing, is it still consistent with, with the lie um, that, that I told? And, and, and the thing is, when you have to protect whatever lies that you have told, sometimes you have to do so even by telling more lies. And so, and so there's a ripple effect then where, where lies get other lies in order for you to protect and cover up the initial lie. You, you, you must always, you must always remember what was the date that I mentioned? What was the day I mentioned? What was the place that I mentioned? And this one, did I give him this detail or did I give him that detail? And, and you have this anxiety to say, okay, I told this one that, that but I am seeing him, I'm seeing him speaking with that one. But this one, I, I, I told him that. And now when they speak to each other, I am worried, hey, they might be talking about the rugby or the euros. But now I am uneasy and anxious to say, but what if for some reason, whatever it is that I lied about comes up and then this one tells this one that I said this and then this one contradicts and then all of a sudden you, 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 you have now to come and, and, and be part of the conversation and, and you say then don't think like it, yeah, no, it's cold today, man, yes. <laughs> but, but, but the thing with lies, Mr. Lord, is that not only um, is, it, is it offensive to God and, and, and not only um, um, is, is, is it offensive to, 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 to the ones to whom we tell the lies, but also it places a burden on us. It, it places a burden on us where there's just, man, there's just this anxiety to say, you know what, I, I need to remember <laughs> an example of this which is unrelated, but uh, I remember the, the other day, Brother Mushan was very quick to, to tell me to say, I said something about reciting sermons, right? To say, hey, sometimes it gets really hard at school, and um, but uh, I've been in Guruguani for six years, so I have a, an entire archive of, of sermons that, that I can, when the going gets tough, I can draw. And Brother Mushan was like, ah, oh, what? We don't want old things here, new things. And the thing with, with the reciting sermons, I don't know, Brother Tom, if you've ever done this, and if you've ever done it, if you've ever felt this way. Even if you are sure that, no man, I only ever preached this sermon in, in David's name. I, I never preached it anywhere else. When you get here and preach it, you are going to feel like, no man, I remember saying this here. <laughs> like, like, there's just something, and, and I think this is God. It's God's way of saying, don't be lazy preacher, right? You will be so uneasy and like, I remember, man. And, and I remember when I said this point, I was even looking at you, Brother Chris. Even when, even when you are sure, right? So it got to a point where at times I wanted to, whatever sermon I preached, afterwards I would write Hilltop, which is to say, I've only ever preached this at Hilltop, <laughs> so that I can be sure, right? Different thing, but similar in that you always have to now keep up with appearances and make sure that your story does not change to make sure that you protect your life. And I don't know about you, but there's so much in life to be anxious about. I don't want to be the author of my own anxiety. I don't want to be. Okay, anxiety shouldn't be anxious in, in the first place, but that's a lesson for another day. But the point is this. Lying places a burden on you because it requires you to always keep up with life.
lives. And, and it should now happen that it seems like you're going to be caught up in your life. Then you have to uh, you have to create another life. Or sometimes even worse, you have to rope in someone to say, please cover for me. Please confirm this, right? Please say I was I was here. Please say I said this. Please say I did that. And I believe that it places a, a burden on us. Now, as I try to wind this up. Even though we know this, why is it that we lie still? And, and, and perhaps with this example I'm going to give, I'm trying to, you remember how earlier on I said big lie, big consequences, I'm, 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 I'm trying to, to go even to the side where even if if, if perhaps indeed we do have that scale of big lies and big consequences, this side, on the other side, it's small lies, small to negligible consequences. With this example I'm going to make, I want to even cover this side. Because again, we are thinking about things based on what Jesus would think, what Jesus would want, what Jesus would say. And so it's not about whether big lies or big consequences. But I think we sometimes lie because we often weigh lies by attaching consequences. Like I've already said. If you read in the book of Acts chapter 5, um, the, the incident with Ananias and, and Sapphira, uh, Ananias and Sapphira, uh, whichever one applies to you, I think the issue there is, you remember, um, 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 everyone is, is benevolent, everyone is generous in, in the early church, and people are saying uh, things and just taking the proceeds and, and bringing it to the apostles so that it, the proceeds would be shared amongst everyone. And Ananias and Sapphira, they, they commit to sell a piece of land that they had, and then they take to take the money and give it to the apostles. But once they see the money, once the money is here, man, like, ah, oh, man, I can, right, I can withhold some of it. And I believe that perhaps, perhaps what happened is they saw their lie as being a victimless lie. Because they had not promised the money to anyone. Um, they did not owe the money to anyone. If they had never been found out, no one was going to be consciously or directly affected by what they had done. And so perhaps because they see that this, this man this is a victimless lie, the consequences are small or even negligible, perhaps they decided to say, no, it's fine, we can withhold some of the proceeds. And so obviously the apostles do not know how much uh, money they sold uh, the field for compared to what they are bringing, but the Holy Spirit, right, is able to guide and reveal to the apostles that no, this one's lie. And, and, and Peter says, you have lied to the Holy Spirit. And I believe that sometimes we also weigh and measure situations and think, but is this, is this, a, 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 is this not a victimless lie? Is this not a lie that has a small to a negligible consequences? And maybe to give an example that I will uh, bring a uh, close. There's a, a man that I know, Tinga, uh, whether in the spirit or in the flesh, I do not know. Uh, but he is studying. Uh, he is studying uh, and he is studying at a time where generally we would say that it's, it's late, right, for, it's not too late, but it's not around the time where you expect someone to pursue their first degree, right? And, 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 and this man, whether in the flesh or in the spirit, who is studying, um, um, is, is self-funded. Right? And, and, and so, and so he, he, the, the money that he, he, he is blessed with has to compete uh, with school and, and textbooks and, 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 and traveling to, to a certain different other city to 
to write exams, uh, whether in the spirit or in the flesh. Um, and, 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 and it's either that or try and do other things that you would like to do in life and, and, and to build and settle down and so on and, and so forth. And, and, and just like um, all of us I think it's fair to say, this person over the last few years uh, coinciding with the time that he was at school or he has been at school um, has, has had to endure some, some personal tragedies um, and, 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 and personal circumstances that, that have affected his mental health so much that, that, that even his schooling and sometimes has, has been affected uh, by that. And so there have been times whether in the flesh or in spirit, uh, where this person has had to write an exam and then he has just been overwhelmed thinking about all of these things, thinking about what's at stake, thinking about how this is now the opportunity for me to try and get something. This is now uh, an opportunity for me to make sure that my money has not gone to waste. This is now um, um, an opportunity for me to try and, and move my mind away from those other things instead of things that have been weighing heavy on me and, and, and to now focus. Uh, but then there have been times when maybe he has or hasn't gone to the doctor. <laughs> to say, April, I am sick. Because, because, because looking at where he thinks he is in, in being ready for, for the exam, right? And, 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 and what's at stake, he feels like, man, I, I can't take any chances. I, I need to go in there very prepared. So he goes to the doctor. And, 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 and with how the consultation goes, there's even a temptation to say when the doctor says what's wrong, there's ah, you can write whatever you want. <laughs> but then he has he has to try and, 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 and come up with with, with a, a set of, 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 of symptoms. Symptoms that will make the doctor to not ask a lot of questions and to say even though you present in this way, but it's quite possible that yes, you have experienced this. And, and oh, by the way, can you also book me off? <laughs> Victimless crime, right? I mean, I mean, I mean, wait, who, who suffers? Also, ah, man, you have to do what you gotta do to get that piece of paper. Right? But is that what life was like? And, and is that not how we look at life sometimes? where we attach consequences and then weigh them to say, by the way, who's going to get hurt from this? And also, who, 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 who's going to find out? Or, oh, man, if, if, if I don't do this, um, the damage is going to be far much more. And so I believe that perhaps uh, we need to take ourselves out of, out of this mindset of weighing consequences. And, and saying this, this is a victimless action. Um, and, uh, by the way, please pray for this man, whether in the spirit or in the flesh, and pray for him that he does not do this ever again. But do you get what I'm getting at, Brother God? I think perhaps we have found ourselves in such situations where a lie that's going to destroy my family, I'm not going to tell. A, a, a lie that's going to affect me, I'm not going to tell. But this one, this one is negligible. And so we lie. But if you notice in scripture how when scripture speaks about lying, it never says lying about what? It just says don't lie. It says don't lie to one another. And so how then do you come out of this as I close? We were talking with, uh, with, with, with Murad the other day um, and, and, and she mentioned that she read somewhere or she heard somewhere and maybe I forgot it because perhaps she wasn't talking to me, maybe she was talking to Jeff and I need to mind my own business. Uh, but she mentioned how she heard somewhere that apparently HIV numbers are on the rise again. And, and, and that's, that's, 
that's that's cause for concern, Mazalwani, because obviously number one, when you think about the conduct that leads to people right acquiring HIV, right? That's something we need to be concerned about. It's something we need to be concerned about also um, uh, because of the burden it places on the health system. Uh, and also it's, it's it's cause for concern uh, because of the suffering that some people experience because of the, the virus. Yes, as much as we've made gains in, 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 in the treatment and prevention, but there are those who do not adhere, there are those who default in their treatment and so forth, and then they experience the severe consequences of HIV even when it gets AIDS. And we know the history of AIDS in our country and how much it has, the damage it has done. But did you know that AIDS actually does not kill? No one has, no one has ever died of AIDS. From, from the little knowledge that I have, no one dies of AIDS. At best, the death certificate will say, uh, died of AIDS-related complications. But AIDS or HIV itself does not kill. But rather what it does, it compromises your immune system so much that, that your body now cannot defend itself against other opportunistic um, infections and diseases and so on. And so it, 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 it compromises your immune system and then TB comes in, pneumonia comes in, or, or whatever, and then that's what kills you. And I was thinking about this and I, and I wonder if lying isn't a similar thing when it comes to sin. Because lying is wrong in and of itself. But isn't it true that lying also creates an environment for other things to flourish as well? If I am willing to lie, then it gives opportunity for me to speak. Because I am going to protect my stealing through lies. If, if I am okay with lying, then, then perhaps it opens the gate uh, for, for fornication because I, I, I am going to, to cover up my fornication with lies. If, if I am prone to lying, it, it opens the door for adultery because I am going to create a chain of events and 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 and, 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 and just put things in place that will deceive in order to protect this that I have done. And so perhaps in our battle against sin, one of the most potent weapons we have is the truth. If if we are people of integrity, people who who hate who hate lying so much that that man, I am not willing to place myself in a situation where I have to lie. Maybe it's going to help us to stay away from other things because to protect and cover up this, I'm going to have to lie, and I'm not going to do this. And maybe these lies that I am talking about, maybe they start with these negligible lies, victimless lies, where I teach myself it's okay to lie. And then all of a sudden I find myself in, in, in this situation where there's big consequences. And so perhaps, Mazalani, we need to hate lying so much. And maybe, just maybe, that might be another weapon with which that, that stays away from lies. And when we do that, we are exhibiting the work of salvation that God is working in us. And so, may God help us to be people who love truth so much, 
so much that 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 we stay away from lies, even if it's negligible consequences of victimless lives. And that perhaps we start thinking about jokes and we start thinking about exaggeration and, and we start thinking about omitting relevant and necessary information that we take it that far and, and, and wonder to say but hmm should I even be doing this in the first place? Because listen to what listen to what Proverbs says, Proverbs 26, 18 and 19. Like a man, man who throws firebrands, arrows and death is the man who deceives his neighbor and says, I was only joking. And so <clears throat> the extent of it was a lot that requires us to even think about such things as exaggeration or, 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 or joking or, 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 or living out on important information. Now, let us remember, lying is sin even if you benefit from it. Lying is sin even if many are doing it. Lying is sin even if others are doing worse. Lying is sin even if it doesn't bother your conscience. Lying is sin even if you don't get caught. Lying is sin even if you don't believe it to be wrong. And, and whatever extent lying goes, all of this is true even to that extent. So may God help us to be people of truth, to reflect the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ, to reflect the character of God and to reflect the working of the Holy Spirit so that we take care of the relationships we have with one another but also free ourselves from the burden and the anxiety of having to live by protecting our lives. May God bless us.